Don't let the man across from you fool you. Doubt is your real enemy. No, it won't be the GOAT and the Gunslinger. The NFC title game will instead feature a pair of quarterbacks called into question at every turn of their careers. They said your stats were hollow. Even drafted the guy to take your job. Doubt be damned. You're here for a reason. One, two, three. Back. The Niners and the Rams will offer up a third installment on Sunday for the right to represent the conference in Super Bowl 56. For San Francisco, a road warrior mentality that began in this very building three weeks ago. LA to Dallas. Dallas to the tundra. A bruising brand of football that poses its opponents with a simple question. How bad do you want it? Our team's been through so many different situations this year that I feel like we never overreact to anything. Our guys just never waver. For LA, the chance to address the question, one they haven't had an answer to since 2018. In the battle of boy geniuses, it's advantage Shanahan. We got to get ready for a team that we know has been a really tough matchup for us. They've done an outstanding job, and it's going to be a great game. But what is past is not prologue. This another opportunity to take back your building, one overrun by Scarlet and Gold time and again. It was a tough environment for us to communicate in, really, the whole second half. Now is the time to block out the noise and make a bit of your own. Appropriate that careers will be defined in the place where anybody can be somebody. The same place a champion will be crowned just two weeks later. This Sunday, a chance to pry the pen out of the hand of your critics and write your own legacy. So check your doubt at the door. It's winning time in the NFC title game. Well, buckle up, but looking back 22 years ago to the day the St. Louis Rams won Super Bowl 34, the franchise's only championship. Can they defeat the 49ers and make their way back? Back with us, Brian McFadden and Danny Cannell. <clears throat> Guys, the last game between these two went to overtime in week 18, and that wasn't that long ago. So, Danny, what's a top matchup that you're looking for when these teams square off for a third time? Well, I mean, anytime you have a wide receiver who's won the triple crown leading the NFL in the most critical passing yardage uh, receiving categories, I think that's the matchup you have to watch out for. And Matthew Stafford's game winning pass last week uh, to Cooper Cup kind of emphasized just how you always have to be ready for him to make a play anytime he gets the football. So I'm looking at Dante Johnson and Quan Williams. Uh, you know, one of those guys will be matched up, probably Dante Johnson predominantly. Will he shadow him the entire game? We'll have to see. But that to me is for a matchup. I mean, this, it, we can talk about Odell Beckham, we can talk about Matthew Stafford, but Cooper Cup is the offensive MVP for this team, and I don't even think it's close. I mean, they kind of feed off of him, and you've got to find a way to slow him down. I don't think you're going to stop him but you cannot let him beat you the way he's beaten so many opponents this year, uh, including what he did last week against the Bucks. So keep all eyes on Cooper this afternoon. Top matchup I'm watching is similar to what you're talking about when you talk about Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford having success. It's the pass rush from the San Francisco 49ers going against the offensive line unit from the Los Angeles Rams. The reason why that's a, a big time matchup for me, if you want to see receptions from Cooper Cup, uh, by the way of Matthew Stafford, he has to be able to be comfortable in the pocket. He needs time. And look at the, at the two most recent matchups between these two teams. The San Francisco 49ers pass rush, they dominate the ball game. In two ball games against the Los Angeles Rams, San Francisco, they had seven sacks and they forced four interceptions. The luxury that San Francisco has is something that most defenses don't have. They have the ability to put pressure and sack your quarterbacks, only rushing four guys and dropping everyone else in coverage. That has been an issue for Matthew Stafford because his offensive line unit, they haven't been able to protect him to be able to allow him to go through his progressions and be comfortable to hit the open pass catcher down the football field. If they have issues once again, like they've done, like they've showcased in the last two matchups, it will be difficult. For this offense to generate points, it will be difficult for us to see a Cooper Cup sighting or a Matthew Stafford throwing uh, throwing big time passes down the football field based on what we've seen in, in, in weeks past. So me personally, that's the top matchup. Will they be able to protect Matthew Stafford against this outstanding dominant pass rush from the San Francisco 49ers? I would love to know how much stock you two are putting, though, in the history between these two teams. The 49ers beat the Rams the last 
six tries and it's hard to keep that kind of streak going. Maybe that's why the 49ers are a three and a half point underdog total 45 in a hook. BMAC for this one, which way are you leaning? The trend is my friend. You talked about how dominant the San Francisco 49ers have been against this team. It, they've been dominant because they're a bad matchup for the Rams. They're a bad matchup. They might not be the most talented team, but the matchup they provide is something the Rams have not been able to uh, find a resolution to. So I'm still sticking with the trend when it comes to betting. The underdog in this matchup, in the last six meetings, the underdog is 6-0 ATS. The 49ers, they're 4-0 ATS in the last four meetings versus the Rams. The 49ers, they're 5-1 ATS in the last six meetings on the road versus the Rams. When I see these numbers and just seeing the matchup, the difficult matchup that they will provide on both sides of the football for the Rams, and getting three points, three and a half, Give me the San Francisco 49ers because they're definitely playing this ball game with a lot of confidence. And they know the matchup that they provide for the Rams is something that causes issues for the Los Angeles Rams on both sides of the football. Oh, I love it when we're on the same side. We were on the opposite <laughs> side in the AFC Championship game. But here in the NFC Championship, me and B-Mac are thinking exactly alike. This is a horrible matchup for the Rams. I mean, it's a nightmare scenario for them. I think they would have loved to, to, uh, to play the Tampa Bay Bucks as opposed to this 49ers team, a team they simply cannot get past. Uh, it's all about the matchups. I mean, you know, some of their best players, Jalen Ramsey on the outside, well, then you can use George Kittle and Debo Samuel, get them inside or rush Debo Samuel so you can find ways to put points on the board. They want to get physical too. And I feel like the, the Rams are a little bit soft. And the 49ers know it, and they kind of rub it in their face. And that's where they get the pressure on Matthew Stafford and when they impose their will in the run game. And I've heard a narrative said several times about, oh, well, it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. I'm here to tell you that's not true. Since 1994, 10 times a team that has you know, uh, swept a team in the regular season at 2-0 and has went on to play the playoffs 10 out of those 14 times, 71%. They made it a clean sweep. A lot of times it's just because you're the better team or it's a bad matchup for one. I'm going to ride that one. So I'm with BMAC. I'm on the 49ers. I'm also on the under because I feel like if you like the 49ers, the recipe is run the football, control the time of possession, pressure Matt Stafford, prevent the big plays, and a low-scoring affair. So I like the 49ers. Don't even hate if you want to put a little on the sprink uh, sprinkle on the money line and the under 45 and a half. I really like that stat, Danny, about the third time being still the charm. And I want to get your opinion here. Who is a top player prop for the Rams that you think is going to hit in this game? For the Rams, for me, I, and this kind of plays in again to where I think the 49ers are going to have the edge. But our guy, Florida State Seminole Cam Akers, maybe one of the best stories of the season, the fact that he was able to come back so fast off that Achilles injury in just six months. But then last week was a rough game. Two fumbles, cost, uh, coughed it up. Uh, you really had a rough one, and they won despite of him. But I think what's going to happen is is he's still going to get his touches. But when you fumble the ball, coach is a little bit more tentative to keep feeding you that rock. His rushing attempts are set at 17 and a half. He'll still be a part of this game plan, but I think Sean McVay will be a little bit more likely to give Sony Michelle some opportunities, keep the ball out of Cam Akers' hands. 17 and a half touches is a lot, so I think it'll be under that one. And maybe they're realizing, okay, maybe we came back a little bit too fast off that injury. Let's pace ourselves a little bit with Cam Akers. I hope he still has a big explosive play or two. I just don't think the 17 and a half touches, uh, he's going to go over that number. Well, for me, the player prop for the Rams is a guy I've been riding with over the last two weeks. That's OBJ. First round playoff matchup against Arizona, I had OBJ anytime touchdown, cashed in. Last week, I had OBJ over his receiving yard total, cashed in. I'm going to keep betting on OBJ. I'm staying with the hot trend. I'm taking OBJ over his 52 and a half receiving yards. You talked about Cooper Cup earlier, Danny, and you highlighted how important he has been to Matthew Stafford in this offense. And the San Francisco 49ers, they understand that. They realize that. They will try to devote more attention to Cooper Cup, deserving so because he's been that type of wide receiver the entire year. But that will open up opportunities like we've seen in in past weeks for OBJ and you can tell he's more comfortable within this offense so that's the player prop I'm riding with OBJ over his receiving yard total of 52 and a half all right B Mac what about a top San Fran player prop that that's catching your eye 
Well, this player has been kind of quiet when it comes to catching passes, but we know he's a prolific guy for the San Francisco 49ers, and that's George Kittle. His player prop that I'm targeting is four and a half receptions. I'm going over, and here's why. It's about that time that we see George Kittle. We have a George Kittle sighting. He will be very, very important in the running game, but he will also have a huge say-so in the passing game as well. And then you look at the two uh, most recent matchups between George Kittle and the Rams, pass defense. He has five receptions in both matchups. You look at this line, Vegas, they're very, very smart. They think they are so slick. It's four and a half. I will continue to ride that trend with the George Kittle. I see at least five receptions, and that's all you need to be able to win this player prop. So I'm going George Kittle over four and a half receptions. All right, this one's a little risky. This one comes like at your own peril. but And I hope BMAC is right because that'll play into mine. Jimmy Garoppolo's passing yards are set at 230 and a half, 230 and a half passing yards. Now, in the previous two playoff games, he's had 131 and 172 and has looked atrocious. But I'm betting on Jimmy G. I think I think Kyle Shanahan and I think the Rams, more importantly, have looked at this matchup and said, all right, we've been tired of getting run over. Kyle Shanahan can coach. He can scheme up plays to give Jimmy Garoppolo either shots for chunk yardage early or confidence boosters where he gets out uh, uh, quarterback boot quarterback uh, scramble gets outside the pocket easy passes that you get runs after the catch I think Jimmy Garoppolo silences some of his critics today goes over the number now I don't think he's throwing for 404 touchdowns but 230 and a half that's way too low so give me the over Jimmy Garoppolo's passing yardage total Oh, bold play there, Danny. We're going to see if it pays off. Danny Cannell, Brian McFadden, appreciate the insight, guys. And let's catch you up on their picks for this NFC Championship selection. Danny going with the 49ers in the under 45 and a half. His Rams player prop, Cam Akers under 17 and a half rushing attempts. His 49ers prop going with Jimmy G, baby, over 230 and a half passing yards. As for BMAC, also going with the 49ers, the trend is his friend. And that goes for also picking OBJ over 52 and a half receiving yards. As for the 49ers, he's thinking George Kittle over four and a half receptions. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.